Welcome back for our uh, live episode tonight. Right. How are you doing, Richard? Doing well. I haven't seen you doing much well. today. I know. I was out today. I was, I was on road trips today. Multiple yeah. road trips. <laughs> you are all over, all from, over Central Florida. From East Polk County all the way over to uh, North Hillsborough County today. You're all right. over the place. That's right. That was a, yeah, across the state. So, mm -hmm. But we're finally here. Well, I'm back. That's I was right. going to welcome myself back, but, welcome, but, but I back. welcomed you. You did. So you, so you didn't have to welcome yourself. Okay. So I can see we already have a few uh, viewers yes. mm -hmm. uh, in, and so that's fantastic. Very excited about that. Welcome to um, all of you. Yes. And because tonight's, in tonight's episode, we are going to be talking about, uh, or tonight's broadcast, we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. the next two episodes, which are episodes three and four right. of 13 Reasons Why. Now, last week, I had a great discussion last mm -hmm. week about um, about this whole right. uh, process and, and what's going on with episodes one and two mm -hmm. um, as we really start getting into what's happening with um, Hannah Baker mm -hmm. and and Clay and all of these different characters mm -hmm. that we have um, in our in our story here. And since we posted that one, we have since learned that this is going to be perhaps a mini series. Uh, some type? No, uh, a repeated series. There's going to be a uh, season two. Season two. Yes, they've right. announced that there's going to be a second season. Right. So all the more reason to tune in. Yeah. Um, and keep the discussion going. Uh, there have been a number of other discussions that have occurred. Right. And we will be repeating some themes because some of them are important. Yeah. And some of them recur. Right. As you go through the series. So we will be discussing those things. So don't hesitate at all if you have a question that's been asked before or you right. want clarification on something please feel free right absolutely mm -hmm. so um yeah it's going to be great because there, there are some recurring themes mm -hmm. as you said there mm -hmm. are some things that just keep coming up and right. i and i think that again you know i i've sort of raved a little bit about this show in, in different right. ways and I, and I think one of the ways that i really appreciate what this show does mm -hmm. is as it relates to dealing with some of these things and really, maybe maybe really emphasizing, maybe arguably overemphasizing right. it sometimes, but really emphasizing some of these aspects that are really key mm -hmm. to some of these issues in, in right. for teenagers. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I and I think I said this last week. What I like about the show is that it presents these different characters, mm -hmm. who um, they're never real life because this is. Art at right. all. It's not a. It's not a video that they shot in a school. It is acting after all. Right. But it is a reflection of, of what is going on in our schools. The language, uh, the approaches, the attitudes right. are are fairly accurate reflection. Um, yeah. Sanitized in some way, but but fairly accurate. Yeah. So I think it's worth a dis I think it's worth talking about. Right. With having these discussions, there was an interesting piece on the news today about um, research that suggests that bullying is going down in right. schools and. It may be, but it's also taking a different form that we yeah. didn't have to deal with before. So all this stuff is still alive and well. Yeah, we had a we we were talking about that earlier because yeah. uh, you know I saw that we were talking about that research, right. and and I think that that's really interesting research because I think that my take on it would be that you know that kind of research is really difficult to do mm -hmm. because you right. you're really relying on reports, right. self reports, and so somebody has to say. I was abused, or I'm being, or, or I, I'm, or, I was uh, bullied. I'm being bullied, and, right. and that kind of stuff. And, and I wonder if a lot of it is just that we're getting less reports, fewer of reports, it. perhaps. Right. Um, that not necessarily that it's going down, but that it's we're, we're getting fewer reports. Right. Of it. And it depends where you do the research, what school, what kids you're talking to, because you're not talking to everybody. You're talking to a sample, right? Um, and so you have to be careful. But I'm, I'm just not convinced that um, bullying. Right. Bullying is going down. Certain types of bullying might be, but I also suspect that less of it is being reported. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so that that's uh, forever an issue, mm -hmm. um, and one that we will continue to have because uh, you, you, there, there's just no way to to monitor it with no. with any great level of precision. And and this is these are the ages when children do tease each other right. and they jockey for status. Right. And one one way to have status is to denigrate or um, criticize others, make right. fun of others, and that makes some people feel better. Right, you create so, a position by a natural. by first creating a vacancy for that mm -hmm. position, and right. so you, you criticize other people to 
right. to pull them down, to bring them down so that that leaves a vacancy for you to fill. Right. And, and just because it occurs doesn't justify its existence. Right. I agree, you know, I think President Obama came out and said it doesn't have to be a rite of passage. Right. And I agree. Right. But I think right now it is. Right. And, um, and we need to do everything we can. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's um, let's get to tonight's uh, mm -hmm. topic. And so we're going to be talking about, as I said, um, tape two, right. which includes um, episodes uh, three. episodes three and four. Right. I think that that's it right there. Is that it? That's it. That's it. And, and so yep. let's uh, let's look at the first episode. So side A of tape two is all about Alex. Now we got an introduction right. to Alex in tape in tape one side B when mm -hmm. we we found out that he and um, Hannah and Jessica and them were hanging out at Monet. They were the newcomers. They were the they were right. all the newcomers and they they created this little clique right. uh, with each other, and th as the last episode as mm -hmm. uh, episode two was ending, what we started seeing was there was this divide. Uh, between the three of them, the three, um, right. and as we learned in this episode, it was the list, right. and and it wasn't that Alex created the list. It was that this list was going around, right. but Alex was the one who basically created this divide between Hannah and Jessica when he put on the list that Hannah had the best butt right. and that Jessica had the worst butt, right, and that. That really started that divide. That really started this huge separation between Jessica and Hannah. And, and at one point in this episode, uh, Alex even said, not only did I, did I do that, mm -hmm. not only did I create this big issue and put a target on Hannah, right. I also took away her best friend. Right, right. And that's, that's, a, right. that's a big issue. Right, that's what it, that, that was the real thing, that he had split these two. They had, right. had a relationship, shared anxieties, uh, newcomers at the school, and they had, they had formed a relationship, and, um, and he, he, he uh, separated the two of them. Right, split right. Split the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so the list really, um, it, it was sort of the start, it was the beginning of the end for that's that right. threesome. That's right. And, and, and that, that really seemed to, 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 to accelerate some of the deterioration this, that Hannah was experiencing as it relates to, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, her spiral. Yeah, um, and, and the thing that we should talk about with the list is that, um, you know, many times what we saw in, um, what we saw in this episode, and I think that you kind of alluded to it last time, is that there are some students who saw the list and really embraced it. Right. The one girl who they said they had the best lips. That's right. That's right. You, you could she see was, her putting on lipstick, and she was really embracing this she idea. That she had the best this new role, this attention that she was getting. Right. right. Whereas <laughs> other students, like like Hannah, um, even though it was, I, I think in, in a in a maybe inappropriate way, mm -hmm. a a compliment, or maybe was thought to be a compliment, mm -hmm. uh, it, she really didn't respond to it the same no. way that the other girl mm -hmm. did. No. And so, so, you know, the thing that we have to think about with that is that there's going to be times when our children, um, you know, maybe think that they're giving a compliment. They mm -hmm. think that they're expressing some positive thing about somebody else. Right. And, and that other person may not take it very well. Or it was, we were, it was just a joke. It was just, right. a, you know, and that, that we go back to that rite of passage business that, um, no, kids do do this to each other. Okay, but you have to remember that while some kids consider it a comical rite of passage or an acceptable rite of passage, for others it can be very damaging. And we need to right. think, we need to remember that. And especially for adults, kids don't think that way. But adults need to think about it that way. No, it, it really isn't funny for some. And whereas some people threw it away. Right. Remember that right. one kid threw it away, he was so offended by it. Uh, another, um, Right. Another kid went and pulled it out of the garbage can. Yeah, because they really. Oh, we still have this slide up. So let me let me switch yeah. over so that we have it off the slide. Um, I got to remember to remember to do that. So when we are um, looking at this, these behaviors, these behaviors happen, and so when these behaviors happen, we have to we have to be prepared. We have to prepare our children. We have to prepare our teens. We have to let them know. 
um, what the potential effects of these kinds of statements will be. That's right. That's uh, right. To, to all students. Right. Not even if 80 or 90 percent are okay with it. Right. We have to remember that the other 20 percent could be vulnerable, could be damaged. Right. Absolutely. So um, now let's look at the next thing that we have here for um, as a as a major topic for for this, and it's the social learning theory. And and what happened is near the beginning of this episode, we heard one of the teachers talk about social learning theory. Now, what social learning theory is, is this idea that um, it's really based upon a sort of a modeling perspective, and that is that we all learn, or we tend to learn, by watching and, and seeing what other people do. So if, if in, 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 the, in the program, uh, Clay was called upon in class to, to give an example, and he gave the example of uh, slang. And what he said was, you know, when slang is used by a couple of people, it's picked up by by the larger group of people, and then it takes on and it it becomes something that a lot of other people will say, and and so we get into this um, scenario where a lot of people are using these words or these these phrases, and we have no idea, you know, unless you're in, you don't have any idea what they're talking about. That's right. That's right. Unless you're a part of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so with social learning theory, and, and social learning theory really is a, a major, a major psychological um, theory yeah. that we yeah. use often to to mm -hmm. to consider and to talk about how we learn, how we gain new skills, and and especially uh, again that that sort of Bandura's idea of modeling. That's right. Uh, that we we pick up things, these cues from other people. We, learn, we, but we learn by watching others. Right, right. right. And, uh, that right. famous, the famous Bobo doll. Right. Uh, and what we saw was in, in that experience, and, and you can go on YouTube and um, do a Google search right. for the Bobo mm -hmm. doll experiment, and you can see the original. Yeah. Um, it is. Uh, it's all grainy and black. Yeah, and white. It's, yeah. it's horrible. It's not HD at all. No, no. Uh, it's horrible <laughs> quality. But no. you can see, you know, this... Um, this woman beating up a bobo, and it's so funny because it's so like 60s, right. 70s. I don't even know when it was. We used recorded. to have one of them. Do you ever have one of them? No. Oh, they, oh the little bobo doll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. A bobo similar. doll is something that if if you hit it, in the days when we were more aggressive, it had sand in the bottom. <laughs> right. And right. so if you hit it, it popped back up because right. the bottom was heavy. Yeah. So it would come back up for more. Yeah. Punishment. And so so here's this woman with, you know, with a, a knee length or just below her knee length <laughs> skirt on and high heels. And she's like this this 19 classic she traditional like 1970s um, um, secretary look uh, right. and, and she's beating up this little Bobo doll thing and she it's it looks oh, so God. staged. Mm -hmm. But sure enough, the little boy, he, he goes and he does exactly what she right. does. Did exactly what she did. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's social learning theory. And so the reason that it plays such an important part here mm -hmm. is because throughout this episode, I mean, if you really watch right. what happens, especially with Alex, yes, he is, he, if we want to use the word victim, he is the victim of social learning theory throughout this episode right. yeah. because, you know, the, um, for Halloween, uh, they, they had the costume mm -hmm. contest, and he was in there with the with the others that were <laughs> what were that was muff divers. <laughs> that was there. They all had muff written on their shirt, and they had you know their goggles and stuff like that. And they, but he completely bought into yeah. this um, this social learning theory, mm -hmm. and he became part of that group. Now he was certainly distressed by it. Right. But but he went right along with it. The the kid who wanted to fit in, right? And you see him this recurring theme with him is that right. he wants to fit in, right? And he even says, you know, my, my dad was just happy that I had guy friends, right. you know. And Which so is another whole part of the story, right, right? Right. So so it is a social learning theory is, is a very powerful at, learning tool at this age. It is because the most important thing for these kids for kids this age. Is that they are accepted, right? Even if they're not, at least they're accepted. They, right. they have to find a place where they're accepted. Remember, these teenagers are at a point where they're beginning to separate from their families, right? And separating from your family can can be a frightening thing if you don't have somebody else to hang out with. And so they're they're working as hard as they can to be accepted by somebody, right? 
because they're they're losing the affiliation they had with their families, many right. of them, and um, as they become independent, right. So now they want to affiliate with somebody else. Yeah, they they we we all and we've talked about this in other podcasts. Yeah. We all have a drive to oh. be connected to somebody. That's right. And so, you know, as soon as you again through social learning theory, as mm -hmm. soon as we start taking on some of the characteristics and traits of a group that's going to connect with us, right. We, that's going to really reinforce those behaviors and really get us um, get us connected to them. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we're going to become more and more connected to them. That's so right. yeah. So um, so the so again, this is a, going to be a recurring theme through a lot of what we talk about in not just in this episode, but throughout the uh, remainder of the program mm -hmm. um, as we're going through. Um, let's see if I can get to the, our slide again. Um, I put it down there and then I will, I, I'm still trying to back up make there. sure I can navigate through all these things. Um, it is not always easy. So there it is. So the next thing is, and this was a quote by Hannah and, yeah. and she was say, she was, she was sort of quoting somebody else. But I, I love the statement that she made yeah. because she said, you know, they keep saying that you're taking it too serious, but you've never been a girl. I was struck by that statement. Yeah. I mean, if you don't watch this for any other reason, that struck me as a, yeah. as a, as a man, right. first of all, and she's right. I've never been a girl, but I have two daughters right. who have been on the receiving end of that. And right. I'm thinking, oh, that's a very, very different perspective. No, I've never been a girl. And I just love the line. I right. It's a great line. Yeah, because it, it is a different, the, the world is different it is. for girls than it is for guys. Right. And, and, and that's not to say that it's that much more difficult for girls than it is for guys. It's just different. It's difficult for guys for different reasons. You know, what struck me, again, as a father of two girls, what struck me about this movie is the vulnerability, right? Uh, and the the uh, the very awkward position that boys put girls in, right? You know, not all boys, but, right? But they're but these main characters, they they put these girls into terribly compromising positions, right? You know? um, and that was striking. And that and this, I think, this phrase, this "but you've never been a girl" really captures that, right? That they they are sort of victimized right. every day, all right. day. Mm -hmm. Right, because they know what's happening behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, and, and we see, so so we see very directly from Hannah how mm -hmm. challenging it is to uh -huh. be a girl, but I think that we also simultaneously see how difficult it is from both Clay and Alex right. to be a guy, because yeah, they for those two guys they yeah. have to right because mm -hmm. they're not the jocks. That's they're right. Not the jocks the, are doing fine. Right, they're taking care of each other. They have group. They have support. They have mm -hmm. rewards. They get trophies. Right, all these wonderful things happen to the jocks. But that's only a small percentage of these kids. Right, less than 10, probably ten percent. Right, who are athletes. Remember, ninety percent don't get all that. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so it, it's just as different, different, mm -hmm. different. Uh, but very difficult for both both sets, Absolutely. and and they don't understand. I, I think guys, just as guys have difficulty understanding what it's like to be a girl, right. girls have a difficult time understanding what it's like to be a guy. I mean, th th there are certain expectations that are there right. that we sort of subconsciously mm -hmm. maybe know, mm -hmm. and and it's, it really puts pressure on us that we're not always completely prepared to manage. Right. Um, so, so I think that this, again, as we go through the remaining um, uh, episodes, right. keep an eye out for that because you're going to see that time and time and time again. We're going to see that again mm -hmm. in the next episode right. um, as we get to um, tape two, side B. Yeah, we're going to see that with 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 Tyler as well. Right, and you know when we add when we um, encourage parents to watch this with their children, this is a wonderful. This is one of the great ones because of all this, all that's on this slide, this whole idea of the list and being a girl and being victimized and having to reinvent yourself. And the last line that Clay utters, you know, girls girls would never make, and they wouldn't. They, right. They, they, they probably wouldn't. Right. Um, yeah, that last bullet there on the on And the it would be there. a wonderful conversation to have with a 13 or 14 or 15 year old uh, girl. Right. You know, right. This, is, this is the world they're going to be stepping into. Yeah, so, um, and, and, and it is, and I think that Clay's statement there. So just kind of skipping down to mm -hmm. girls, uh, girls would never make that list. And that, that came when, when Hannah said, you know, well, what would happen if the, if us girls made a list like mm -hmm. that and 
you were said to have the worst biceps. Right. Um, you know, at first, Clay got a little bit defensive. <laughs> right. He goes, well, I mean, mine are better I, than Alex's. I have biceps. <laughs> um, but, um, but then he said, but girls would never make that list. And again, I think that that is a, sort of a fundamental difference between guys mm -hmm. and girls because um, girls wouldn't do that because girls don't think about, they don't, um, they don't value things in the same way that That's guys right. do. It's mm -hmm. not that they wouldn't make those statements. Um, and it, it's not that they wouldn't necessarily yeah. say those things to each other. Right. They wouldn't go through this grading and rating process. Right. They may make comments about somebody's biceps or pecs or, you know, a six pack or eight pack, but they don't do this grading system, you know, and they, they, they're not, they're not, I don't think they're doing that. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think they're doing that. Right, right. So, um, so it, it is another example of where there's that difference, that difference. In, right. in gender. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the last bullet here on this slide that we're going yeah. to talk about is, is Hannah reinventing herself. Right. Now, this is, this came at a, a point in the in the program where, and here I am. I'm, I still have the slide up again, so I'm going to take it down. Um, a, a point in the program where. Hannah is talking to Clay about going off to college, and and yes. Clay says, right. uh, "Well, what's the what's the big deal? Why, why mm -hmm. are you why are you going to do that?" And and she says, "No, when I go there, right. I can reinvent myself. Right. I can be whatever I, I want to be, I can be. Um, and right. I can completely be a new person." That's right. And and we think we we dream of those opportunities. We really look forward to those kinds of opportunities, mm -hmm. and we we imagine ourselves being able to shift and adjust and and become some new right. something when we get to these new settings. And it's not always the case that we can do that. It's it's difficult. It's true. I mean, you may or may you may not. Right. No. You. you yeah. You hope that you can. Right. But I'm not sure that you can reinvent yourself. Right. And and that's that's a discussion to have because you really are not going to reinvent yourself. Right. What you will find is you will find people like you. Mm -hmm. You'll find more people that you have things in common with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll find more people who are like you. Uh, you may make it easier to find friends because college students tend to be a little less critical. Right. They, other, they start to have other things on their minds. So the environment changes. Right. But you fundamentally are not going to change. You're not right. going to go to college. You're probably not going to go to college and reinvent yourself. Well, and think about it this way, you know, if you just went through four years of high school, right. and this was your life through four this years of high school, that's right. you have a lot of experience behaving and responding and, and dealing with things in that way. In that way. Right. And so when you go to college, what, what tends to happen is that the type of people that you hang out with and spend time with mm -hmm. in high school are you going to be the type of people that you tend to be drawn to in they're college, going, they're probably going to be similar, right? Mm -hmm. If and, you ran around with athletes in high school, you're probably going to run around with athletes right. in college, right? So, so it doesn't, mm -hmm. um, the it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't always happen where we can begin anew That's right. and and really reinvent ourselves. Right. Some people do, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Some people do, and, and and that has to do with their personality and their their mm -hmm. temperament and some of some of their personal attributes right. but for the most part we are who we are and and That's right. you know so a lot of the work we have to do is is sort of getting comfortable and familiar and and okay with being who we are using the assets that we have right right yeah so so it, so it, it is difficult you're not going to be a different person no 3 months after graduating from high school no mm -hmm. that probably not probably not Probably not. It probably won't happen. Right. So, um, so now let's let's look at let's go to the next slide because there is a um, there is another part that we need to talk about because th this was such a a good episode that we actually have two slides mm -hmm. of of major points that we yeah. had to get through. Yeah, this was an important. Uh, this was a, this was a really important slide, episode. Yeah. yeah. The episode. Um, now, at one point mm -hmm. in the program, Tony says, you really don't know what's going on in someone's life. Right. And we've we've mentioned that a couple of times, I think, both in the introduction and in last week's episode, where we were talking, we talked about the fact that, you know, you can say something that you think is um, benign, mm -hmm. something you think is a compliment or something that you think 
is really relatively meaningless, harmless. Mm -hmm. But you have no idea what's going on in that other person's life. That's right. Um, I, I noted like throughout, throughout much of this uh, whole series, mm -hmm. Hannah, if you look at it from the right, from a, from a certain perspective, Hannah looks very confident. She looks uh, to me. She looks very self-assured. Mm -hmm. She looks like she is in control of herself. There, there are times when she's very emotional, of course, when especially when things happen, like uh, there on the, the third bullet yeah. down, when when Bryce uh, grabs her uh, backside, um, and then kind of justifies it, like you know, hey, well, you know, the the um, the store's tight. Right. Oh right. well, but it's tight, and mm -hmm. yeah, the list was right, and you know, he he's kind of dancing around this. Mm -hmm. um, Assault. I mean, yeah, really, really. It, it, is, it, it is, is. <laughs> it right? Is. Um, and when I do forensic work, um, <laughs> and, and we talk about battery, especially even right. sexual battery, that constitutes sexual battery. I mean, right. you, you're touching someone in a sexual manner against their will. Um, I mean, that would constitute a sexual battery. battery. That yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, he from perhaps from his perspective. You know, she should be. Uh, she should feel good that he mm -hmm. chose to do that, and that that list has been made for. She should be flattered. She should write that he chose to give her this attention. Right. Um, but really, you know, you, again, you don't know what's going on inside somebody else's mind, inside their life, and and it really. That's the important lesson. Yeah. You don't know what's going on, what they've been through, what they're going through, and you have to be so exceedingly careful. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the last, the last piece I think from this episode, and, and it's the second and fourth bullet here right. on the screen. It, th this episode is really the first time that we see a character really, besides Clay, right. really reflecting on the tapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Alex is he is struggling. Right. And at that one point he said, you know, I killed Hannah Baker, mm -hmm. and so did Jessica, and so did you, and so did uh, you know went through the list. Um, and, and then, you know, it, it's, it, it's just, um, it's just, it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. to see, because, you know, he, he had these motivations to do things at, right. at one point, um, and now reflecting back and looking at what happens, you know, he's, he's accepting his, res his right. responsibility, um, his, his role in this decision that Hannah made. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really sad, and to see him struggle the way that he did, and of course the the episode ends with him falling in the pool and, and kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it's very metaphorical. You know, you can really look into that in a lot of different ways. But this is, you know, at this age, he's probably seventeen, right? Maybe eighteen, to accept that responsibility, and then how do you process that? Right. You know, um, yeah. That that's an enormous. I mean, even adults have a hard mm -hmm. time processing suicide. Absolutely, so, right? you just don't have the skills when you're 17 or 18 to right. process it. Right. Uh, but but that's what he's forced to do. Now, right. Now he has he he knows it. He's owned his share of it, and now he has to try to deal with it. Right. Absolutely. And that's going to be a struggle. Yeah. 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 So um, and I was wrong. The the fourth bullet here is a completely different point that that. You and I have talked about, I think, for the past two weeks. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was thinking that it was something else. But, um, you know, after Clay kind of got caught up with Alex and mm -hmm. Bryce and some of those other guys, and he ends up, you know, drinking that 40-ounce malt, malt liquor very, very quickly. Woo, for a first-time drinker. <laughs> He's a man. Um, yeah. it, it was... I thought that that was such. Oh, I gotta get. I got the slide up. So, mm -hmm. I thought that that was such. Um, that was such an important um, and and realistic right. presentation mm -hmm. because his mom jumped on him like. Oh, you mean after um, he got home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he oh. got home and oh, and he went, he was he walked in and he's and mom's Obviously. like, "Are you drunk?" Right. And he goes, "I think so." <laughs> and and and. It was just so. I thought it was a very authentic, realistic presentation right. of the way that a parent would respond. That's the way um, they react. And, and mom sort of jumped right in, mm -hmm. starting to give demands and expectations and being punitive. And dad said, "Hold on, before and we get to, to before we get to the sentencing phase." Another one of the great lines in this movie. Let's just have dinner, right? Before and we get to the sentencing. It phase. was so beautiful because 
that's what we talk. We talk about that all the time. Well, one of the problems that we're all, many of us are guilty, many parents are guilty of, is you wait for your kids to make a mistake like this. And then you say, I'm going to nip this in the bud. I'm going to take care of this the first time right. it happens. So it never happens again. Right. And that's what this mom was doing. Yeah. Is that she was, she was going to, she was going to bring down the hammer and make sure that, by golly, this would never, she would punish him to the point where he would never, ever do this again. Because that's that's our inclination. That, right. that is our thing. So when something happens, we have to pounce. Yeah, we're so afraid of our kids using drugs and alcohol, right. rightfully so. But there are ways to deal with this that are more effective than right. getting, getting to the sentencing phase. Right. right. That, that was such, a, we're going to have to write something or, yeah. or do something and, and title it, you know, before we get to the sentencing phase. Um, but, but even the next morning yeah. when dad comes in and he goes, um, well, did you, did you learn your lesson? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, don't drink. And he goes, you're, you're going to drink. That's going to happen. Right. But what you need to learn is that there's consequences to your actions. Right. And again, just, I, I really like his dad. Yeah. <laughs> his dad is one of my favorite characters. Reasonable approach to child rearing. Yeah. He mm -hmm. said, you're going to drink. It's going to happen. There but, be con this is one of the consequences you throw right. up on the table. Here's, mm -hmm. here's some other consequences. Right. And some of them you don't want to have to deal with. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so he, and he gave him that concoction of whatever. He said, no, no, don't smell it. Don't smell it. Just, just drink it. Just fast. drink it. Right. Um, but it was, it, it, it's just, mm -hmm. again, that whole that whole section of the program to me was so right. uh, it was such a good representation of mm -hmm. what I think happens in right. so many families. Now, now I, I hope that there is a, a person in your family that's like that dad that, yeah. that can keep us cool and keep, and, the pers and keep some perspective. Calm. That's right, right. That's because right. You, we don't have to pounce. Mm -hmm. We because you know what will happen if we, if we look at what Clay was doing as his mother was. Um, coming at him right. that that evening uh, at the dinner table, he was about to retreat and he was going to be gone. And, you know, and and they would not have been able to reach him. Right. And Dad saved it a little mm -hmm. bit, and he certainly saved it the next the morning. Next morning. Right. Um, when he when he said, "Yeah, nobody's mad. Right. It's just hey, physically and metaphorically, we just need to have open doors from now on." Right. You know. Right. And that's what you want. No more closed doors. Right. Because. As angry as his mother may have been, remember how it remember the the circumstances as to how he got drunk in the first place, and what a what a trauma that must have been for him. Right. You know, for this to, to for these boys to have done that to him. Right. You know. So and yeah. with Alex. Right. You know, with Alex there, so it was, that was trauma enough for that yeah. for that kid. That's enough trauma for one day. Right. You don't come home and get punished on top of it. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and, and there's, again, the, the, there's so many other ways for him to learn the lesson mm -hmm. that he needs to learn from that than being punitive and That's punishing right. and everything. And it may take a couple of episodes like that yeah. to, for him to learn that lesson. Right. It does for many of us. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So any other, any other things about that? Yeah. It's, it reminds me of that line. You've never been a girl, right. you know, and like, you have to remember what it was like when you were a teenager and remember right. that he just went through one trauma. So keep in mind that they're going through these traumas anyway, yeah. and they don't need for us to be, um, to be so harsh and so punitive. Use, I agree with you. Use mm -hmm. it, use the dad's approach. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, you know, get a good night's sleep and then we'll talk about it in the morning. Yeah. And it doesn't have exactly. to be punitive or angry. And then even the next morning he stays calm and he's like, Hey, and no, no big bells and whistles. It's just me and you. You want cereal? Um, and 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 that was that was it. Right. And he's like, no, nah, just black coffee. Right. And it's like, okay, I don't drink coffee. Yeah. So, um, and it, just as we're wrapping up this episode, mm -hmm. and before we move on to the next episode, a few comments. You know, we were talking about Alex falling into the pool. Right. Um, our, our Noreen wrote in, and, and like she she shared what um what I thought it, what we were talking about is that. It was almost like he was thinking about suicide, okay, right, thinking right. about hurting himself, mm -hmm. um, as though he sort of wished that he could just right. go to the bottom of the pool and 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 not come back up. And right. um, you know, and then when he does come back up to the top, you know, he's just kind of floating there. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think that there's so much metaphorical meaning in that. Right. Um, you Cleansing. Know, um, wishful cleansing, even right. um, because. Absolutely. 
because yeah, he gets back games. out and then all of that junk gets back on him again mm -hmm. as he gets because he stays connected to those right. guys. He stays, that's right. He stays in the yeah in that environment. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. um, it, it's so unfortunate. So right. and you're right, Noreen. Uh, it would have been great if if Clay's mother would have even asked what happened first. Right. She just jumps right How in How did you there. get here? What, what, and, tell me what happened. And man, there are so many parents that are like that. They just jump right on it. It's like, it doesn't matter why. You know, that's not supposed to happen. In schools, teachers refer to it as the teachable moment. Right. You know, there were just times when it's the absolute perfect time to teach something. And this was a teachable right. moment for these parents. And yeah. dad, dad, used it as such mm -hmm. and and mom didn't and, and it's lost an opportunity now if, if we think about it what's interesting is dad's a college professor right and mom's an attorney right ah there we have it that there's the there's your difference That's true. it's he's a world an, view he's an educator right she he's an educator and she is she a an attorney. to the to the point um mm -hmm. and and maybe time, in time in, for sentencing that it right right yeah. absolutely so uh, he's was, already guilty. We know he's guilty. Right, right. We don't care why. She's a prosecutor. He was guilty. Right. He's guilty. Yeah. No extenuating circumstances. That's right. Let's go right to the sentencing phase. That's right. Um, yeah. That's true. Absolutely. So, all right. Let's um, let me get the other slide back up again, mm -hmm. and we will go on to the next episode. Um, and the next episode, oh, the next episode is about Tyler, right. and this is where um, good old. Tyler. <laughs> You know, we're going to talk a lot about Tyler as the as we go through these episodes because you have to. If you go back now, I went through all thirteen episodes before, and I'm going through them again as we're as we're going through this. I did not notice how many times Tyler is in the background. He's so always scenes. around. He he's is lurking, always in the that scene. That little face keeps popping up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's just always around. The, the, the whole things when things are going on in the cafeteria. If you right. look in the background, there he is. Right. Um, he's always around. Right. And and it's it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating, um, because you know he, he the, the 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 big issue here. It is the idea of stalkers, right. um, yeah. and I I love it because in her little monologue at the beginning of the tape, as as Hannah mm -hmm. always has, she says social media has made a, a society of stalkers, and and it is so true. It has. We mm -hmm. we follow each other on social media, and and this is I think this is a critical <laughs> lesson for parents. We. We follow each other on social media. Our teenagers follow each other on t uh, on social media. Right. They follow celebrities. They follow s athletes and sports mm -hmm. stars on social media, and they see their lives. Right. And they think that is reality. That's reality. Right. And it's not. <laughs> okay. Let me say it. It's not. I reality. had a friend years and years, ago, maybe back in the seventies, who was starting to watch, it was when TV was first, people were really beginning to watch TV. It was mm -hmm. high quality. And and he said, to be real, it has to be on TV. Right. That's how, you know, and that's true. If right. it's on, if, if, if you see it on TV, mm -hmm. it's really real. Right. You know, what happens out here right. doesn't become real until it's on TV. Right. Then, then it's confirmed. Right. Its existence is confirmed. Yeah. And, and, and if you, if you want just a hint to demonstrate how fake, Mm -hmm. social media is watch watch people do their posts yeah. how many times how many selfies does a person take especially a teenage person especially a teenage girl mm -hmm. how many selfies will she take before she hits post yeah that's true. So, so has to get the angle just <laughs> right has the to lighting, just get the, the angle the everything smile. has to be just right and then we hit post mm -hmm. so Social media creates a staged world. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. and, and so we only post the things that we want other people to see. So either it's going to be typically really good stuff mm -hmm. or really bad That's stuff. Right. That's right. Most of life is spent in the middle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we only see things on those extremes. And so as teenagers, you know, we've talked before about how as a culture, we have really moved a lot to this digital right. digital age. And, and because of that, what's happening is we see the world through mm -hmm. these digital mm -hmm. lenses. Right. And 
I think that we, I think that it's resulting in a skewed view of how the world works. Because now that's becoming reality. You right. Know, Facebook captures it and and and, and uh, confirms its existence. Right. You know. Right. Oh, I got the slides still up. I'm not very. I'm. I'm not doing very good with getting the slides down. Um, it's okay. Them up. Um, but the. Uh, but we we live in this world where we think that to be um, to be validated, mm -hmm. to be um, for something that we're doing to be deemed important, we right. have to have likes and follows, and we have right. to have. Yeah, you know, nobody's all, liking it. It could, couldn't possibly be important. Right. 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 You know the. Um, I, I remember my son one time posted. Um, a, a, a picture. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a funny meme of, of someone dabbing. And um, he posted it and he thought, this is hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think it was, uh, it, it, I think it was um, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and he was, it was, he was doing a prayer and he had his arms raised, but he had this arm going. And so the angle that the picture was taking, it made it look like he was dabbing. And so whoever had made the meme said, you know, that, that um, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Jr. was, was dabbing. And my, my son thought it was really cool, um, and so he put it up on Instagram, and he was like, and then he would like later went back and looked at it, and he was thinking like, oh, very few people liked it. I don't mm -hmm. understand. It's, it, this is it's so great because everybody, I guess, mm -hmm. is into the, I don't know dabbing, but everybody's into dabbing, right. um, or at least they were, you know, were three months ago. Mm -hmm. um, now right. that's old; nobody's doing it anymore. But social learning th theory that's, that's right. what that is. Mm -hmm. um, but he thought it was great and not very many people liked it and so disconcerted like, yeah so like, okay well i guess maybe that wasn't as funny as that's i right. thought it was that's right so we get validated we find right. we find this validation through, through the media. Uh, feedback we're getting in right. social media mm -hmm. and so again i think that what that does is that pushes us further and further out on those right. extremes as it relates to what we're posting mm -hmm. it does um because yeah. we want to get those posts so we're not going to Hey, you yeah. know, made a made a ninety two on that test. Mm -hmm. You know, made an eighty five on that research paper. Right. Nobody says it's got a twenty nine on the math test. Right. Oh, so. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's just. No, we are we, we are really becoming a nation of stalkers. Yeah, you know, we're following each other around, we're following each other's lives, or at least the public lives. Right. Not the right. private lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so, you know, as Hannah said, you know, we have become. A, a society mm -hmm. uh, of that's stalkers, right. Right. and um, that's, that's it's, it's troublesome. I think um, it's going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, now let's look at our second point, and and the second main point here is um, so Clay goes and he's he's outside Taylor's or Tyler's um, room, and then come up mm -hmm. walks Marcus in in a I thought a very creative. Uh, I thought yes. it was a funny. Uh, right the El Nino um, <laughs> right. costume. And he says, um, they, they have a discussion and he says something about Hannah and Marcus says, uh, first of all, first off, Marcus, this is one of the really first times that we see somebody almost completely disregard the tapes. Right. Um, mm -hmm. He was like, look, I didn't even listen to him. I just listened long enough to see, who, to hear who it was about and found right. mine, mm -hmm. then listened to see who was next and then just pass it on. Right. Now, uh, what Tony later tells us that that wasn't true, that, right. that Marcus really listened true. to him. But Marcus was not interested yeah. or acted as though he was not interested right. at all. Acted as though he wasn't disengaged right. from, the, from the whole thing. And and he said probably one of the meanest things that we've heard so far. Right. He goes, look, Hannah's dead. Right. Oh, that was horrible. Right. <laughs> and he goes, she just wanted attention. Right. That's, that's all she was doing. And... Yeah. That is a brutal perspective, but mm -hmm. I think it is a perspective that a lot of people Some have. Some people have it, right? Um, and and so you know when we're, I, I think that we have to work with our kids, um, and and this will start when they're young. Mm -hmm. But this is, I mean, this is empathy. You know, That's empathy right. is that ability to appreciate and feel what somebody mm -hmm. else is feeling, and it happens very young. You right. know, even two and three year olds begin mm -hmm. to develop empathy. Right. Certainly by five or six, it should be almost fully developed. You, you, you should have a perspective of others. Certainly by, by the time you're in first and second grade, empathy should be fully developed. Okay. Right. And so for this kid to express this, and you don't know whether he's tired of hearing about it, tired of talking about it, or whether he's one of the thoughts I had was maybe he was more involved 
than he wanted anybody to know. Right. You know, and, and but you don't know at this point in the series uh, exactly what his role is and why he's taking this position. Right. But it is very different. Stark, stark contrast to everybody else. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and we'll, we'll we'll certainly learn more we'll about learn that more as we in, go. in just a, in in a few yeah. episodes. So. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. So. Um, now, now the next point is what we did already talk about talk this, about that. And, and that yeah. was you know Clay's dad that that beautiful um, your drink it happens. The lesson is that there are consequences to yeah. our actions, mm -hmm. and, and I think that you know in, in some of our previous discussions um, with uh, in um, other podcasts and even in the show, one of the things that we we don't we're not doing a very good job at as a whole as parents is allowing our kids to experience consequences, right. natural consequences, not the consequences right. that we have not we imposed, imposed, not imposed consequences, natural, natural consequences. consequences. Um, because the, the idea that, you know, if you don't do your work, you're going to get a poor grade. Mm -hmm. That's foreign to a lot of students. A lot of students yeah. think, eh, you know, I, I won't turn it in, but you know what? I can turn it in late. It'll be fine. Right. And you, you may even ask, did you talk to the teacher? It, it, you know, the mm -hmm. teacher said, it. oh, no, but she'll be, it'll be fine. Right. Um, we're, we're not doing a very good job of allowing, um, allowing is not the right word. It's, um, uh, um, it, it's, it's, I don't even know what the right word is. Here's I don't know the, what the word is I'm looking here's for. Here's what I experienced when I had a patient years ago. And every year he was told, if you know, through fourth grade, fifth grade, and every, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, mm -hmm. into ninth grade, everybody kept telling him, if you don't do this, you're going to be held back. You're going to fail, right. and you're going to be held back. He was never held back. It right. never made a difference whether he got A's or F's. And finally, at some point in about sixth grade, he just stopped doing homework, right. period. Just stopped. Just right. not doing that. And never, nobody could get him to right. do homework because there were never any consequences right. to it. He got bad grades, but the bad grades didn't mean anything right. because he kept getting promoted to the next year. Right. And so by the time he got to high school, he said, it doesn't matter. I don't have to do anything. Right. Nothing bad is going to happen. They're going to send me to the next grade. Yeah. And he ended up graduating. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, I'm sure that there will be people out there that will almost celebrate that and say, well, good, you know, he, he, he's, at least he has a high school diploma, you know, he, he wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't kept from doing that just because he was making poor decisions right. as a child or anything like that. But what lesson is he learning that he's carrying with him to adulthood? That's right. It took I don't him, want to hire that person. No, it took him into adulthood before he finally grew up, and right. so, you know, despite all that he was allowed to get away with. And the fortunate thing in his case was that he didn't impose this on anybody else. He wasn't taking advantage of anybody. Right. Was, you know, so those behaviors that should have consequences, he never bothered anybody else. This was just his private life. Okay? Right. So that was the only advantage is that nobody else was getting hurt by what he right. was doing. But there are other kids who are stealing and mm -hmm. hitting and hurting other mm -hmm. people. There are never any consequences for it. Right. You know, school, the whole school uniform issue, you know, right. it, Nothing happens if you don't do it. Right. Nothing happens if you don't do your homework. Yeah. Right. So they're not. Many kids will not. Right. Right. So and and instead of applying the naturally occurring consequences, right. what we have instead are you know uh, mandatory ways that teachers have to allow students to make up for it, which is of course giving teachers more work to do. And That's right. you, you punish know, the you, know, you get the teacher has consequences. Right. The teacher right. doesn't need any more consequences. Right. Exactly. So so I guess the 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 moral of that story is allow consequences to we, happen. We need to talk about consequences because many people, some people very close to me, in fact, don't think, no, closer than you, maybe. I'm pretty close. Meh, she's closer. Oh. Um, <laughs> they think I don't believe in consequences. Right. You know, and it's certainly nothing is farther from the truth. We do believe in consequences, right. but we get we get accused of that periodically. Right. So you guys don't believe in consequences. No, we do believe in consequences, but right. they should be natural. They should be. You should learn something from them, and they also should be effective. Right. And yeah. many of our consequences that are imposed are not effective. Right. Because typically, those imposed 
consequences are more for us than they are for That's him. Right. I'm doing my job as right. a parent. I'm punishing you. Like Clay's mom when she was jumping on him for drinking. True. What, what purpose? What is that serving? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's already, he's right. already right. drunk. Right. right. So what are you going to do now? Right. So let's not. We don't have That's to. The sentencing phase. <laughs> the sentencing phase. I love it. <laughs> so, all right. So the next important, really important key here is. Um, there was a there, there was a line um, they, they were having a, a parent teacher meeting or they had the parents mm -hmm. coming in and the principal and the, right. and the counselor were up front talking and they were saying some you know dodging uh, questions from the parents and uh, Hannah's mom was in the back uh, oh, and she yeah. said um, she was talking about the horrible things that are written on the bathroom walls right. and I really thought it was fascinating the way that the principal, and the counselor talked about things mm -hmm. because it was, at, at least to me, I, I don't, I, I don't know, I, I didn't prep this with you, but at least to me, that really presented as the main thing that the principal worries about is worried about is the reputation of the school and the the finances of the school and those kinds of things. That's right. And his job. Right. Um, you know, they they go into the bathroom and he's like. They use some very mm -hmm. um, provocative words uh, mm -hmm. as they're reading the the walls, and he says, "You know, these students can't read and write, <laughs> but they can. They'll do this." Right. And and he goes, "How can this happen? How can this be on these walls?" Which is a really good indication that the print that they the school know. they had no they idea, had no clue. Mm -hmm. And then he says, um, and the guidance counselor says, "Well, faculty is not allowed in the student bathrooms." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That. Um, I, I, it really makes me want to go in and look at some of the different school policies because I've heard some things that happen in school bathrooms and um, it makes me wonder if that's true. It makes me wonder if it's true that faculty is really not supposed to um, go into the student bathrooms. And there's another issue. If a teacher discovers something, then they have a massive amount, of, they might end up with a massive amount of paperwork to do. Yeah. to report the incident. Right. And they don't want to do the paper. I mean, right. The policies are set up so that again the teacher pays the price. Yeah. They they're getting the consequence. Right, exactly. Instead of saying this is a problem, let's go to the principal and deal with it. Now you have an incident report to write up. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's um break up a fight. Break if you are a teacher and you break up a fight between two students. Yeah. You've now created yeah. a lot of extra work for yourself, right? Right, and and it's and I think that that's why we see a lot of teachers. Um, it's not that they don't care. That's right. That's it, the important point. It's, it's not that, that they, they don't care. It's that they, as soon as they get engaged, that's right. There are consequences for them. That's right, and, and that's. You know, and they can end up getting in trouble. Will you grab my son by the arm? Right. You know, now it's assault. Now the teacher gets blamed. Hey, and look, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid. Hey, look. Um, oh, yeah, I got the slide still up. Still, you got to remind me that I put this leave the slide up. But you know, two students are fighting, and right. the teacher comes up and grabs the student and says, "Come on!" And that student goes to pull away, and the teacher scratches them, right. or there's a now bruise on their have, arm. You have bought yourself That's, a boatload of trouble. Yeah. yeah. Uh, trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And there's no way out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really. Uh, we it's, have created policies mm -hmm. that it's not because teachers don't care. It's right. that we've created policies that puts them in an untenable situation, mm -hmm. that they're reluctant or afraid in some cases mm -hmm. to act. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, when they otherwise would. When they when, when, but, when good sense tells them. Yeah. When common sense tells them this is what I should do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, it, it's. It's unfortunate because it, it, it allows issues to perpetuate. That's right. It allows them to get it worse allows, and worse and worse. It allows kids who don't have self-control to get out of control. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, they don't have that adult, the, the adult boundaries and the adult right. inhibiting them. Right. So, yeah. So, okay. um, and, and Noreen just wrote in again that, um, you know, it, the, it's a cop out because it really does come down to the fact that the, 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 especially the administration, mm -hmm. um, fundamentally the administration is responsible for the safety of the students. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
and to to say that well faculty is not allowed in the bathroom or to say you know um you know it, it's not our we're not parenting the kids or this or that you know those are just excuses and they're they're dodges they um mm -hmm. you know because they, they really are when mm -hmm. they when the when the students are at the school it's in loco parentis the, the that's what's on a penny <laughs> no you're at you are when the you're parent. in the environment right in loco parentis you're yeah. the parent that's right mm -hmm. you have the responsibility to protect them lose a kid someday see what happens to you oh you're, you're responsible i i worked at a school for a while and when they they, they were going to go on a field trip and they asked me if i wanted to go along as a um teacher chef i said no i don't want to be <laughs> to lose somebody if if a kid that i'm responsible for decides to run off right and i and i lose track of him because mm -hmm. i'm i'm hurting you know cats. seven or eight other mm -hmm. cats um mm -mm. i don't yeah. want to be in that situation Enormous responsibility oh we used to no. that would be that's that's like the stuff nightmares are made out of <laughs> um because man they look come after you with that Ooh. yeah um yeah, you'll see what your responsibility is if you lose. <laughs> That's one. right. So um, now I, I, we talked about this a few minutes ago. Um, here, here, our next bullet, and that is that Hannah gives off yeah. this air of confidence. She really does. She's very attractive, and uh -huh. anybody who would anybody would love to be Hannah because she is beautiful. Right. Right. And she is very confident. She's confident, and she presents herself. She's not afraid to say no. Right. She's not afraid to stand up for herself. Mm -hmm. You know, I. I from the from the very first episode, I, I love the way that she handles some of these boys and some in some of the girls. Mm -hmm. um, the way that she talks with Clay, I think, is is wonderful. Right. Because it's again, we're going to get back to it, it's very authentic. I think mm -hmm. it, it's that you know, she's not being flirty with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she said, you know, once again, you and the point are distant strangers. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it, it's. She makes statements like that, and it, remember in the first episode, what was it Justin, I think? Um, she gets on the school bus to go home, yeah. Oh yeah. and right. he gets on the school bus with her, and he, she goes, oh, wait a minute, I forgot my geometry book, and she goes out, and he goes, wait a minute, where does the bus go? And he goes, I don't know, I don't ride the bus either. <laughs> That's right. And she gets off and, into... No, there's enormous confidence, yeah. and you, you begin to identify with her because she does all these... Um, Funny, cute, smart, mm -hmm. mostly smart. Really things. smart, yeah. So it's easy. You start to identify with her right away, not only because of her physical appearance, but also because she does these clever little things. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she does give off an air of confidence. Right. You know, and you, you are struck by that right. early on. And I think that that is some of the stuff that the other students are responding to. Right. Her confidence. Her, her confidence. Her, right. right. Because, you know, when. Um, when Marcus says that she just wanted attention, I think to, at some level he's probably looking at you know look she she would she is not afraid to tell you off. What we'll see in a future episode is right. um, she rejected him. Mm -hmm. She she was like get out Which, of here, get away from right. me. She mm -hmm. yelled at him in the middle of uh, of a restaurant, right. um, and he, you know so she she is not hesitant to mm -hmm. express herself. Right. But that is, it's whitewash. That is, I think, what she has on the outside. But on the inside, what we see is that she, she's very fragile. And it goes back to that, that bullet that we had a few minutes ago. We don't know that what, what Tony said. We don't know what's going on in someone's life. And there's another, there's another aspect of this that I think evolves through the series. And that is that though she begins as a very confident, clever, smart, mm -hmm. popular person, the onslaught right. of the assaults and the abuse and the ridicule, right. just um, incident after incident after incident, it's glacial mm -hmm. because it just accumulates right. and accumulates and finally, like a glacier, begins to slide. And that's right. the other thing that you can see, just the weight of all this. Once she became a target, right, and and she she gradually becomes a target. Once she became a target, and it was coming from so many different, hence thirteen, uh, coming from so many different directions, right, um, that it was just it became overwhelming, right, to her. Yeah, it was just too much for her to handle, right. Um, but but when she, you know, and and we we 
we do judgments or we we make judgments of mm -hmm. people uh, when we look at their this outside right. of them, right. the way that they behave. So we see that really angry kid, like like uh, Alex. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's like angry. He quits jazz band. He right. yeah. you know he's mad. He's doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And we think, you know, that's, that kid's, ju he's just a jerk. He's no. just angry. Mm -hmm. He's just whatever. But on, but what's really fueling that is, you know, he is in distress. He is right. broken. Right. Um, Hannah presents as confident and strong, but she's not. But she's compensating. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we don't do a very good job of recognizing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And And I think that that is where we get into – when we get into problems, when we um, when we don't take uh, the obvious signs right. um, seriously, mm -hmm. we we look at the signs and say, "Man, she, I wonder if she's depressed." Right. But then you see that confidence. You say, "Okay, no, she's can't she's fine. That. It can't right. be that she's mm -hmm. depressed. Look at look how confident she is." Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so we we make those misjudgments because of that. That's right. We're all good at masking, hiding. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, our last bullet here is that um, yeah. another statement by Hannah, and she said that nowhere was safe. Mm -hmm. You took all that away. Right. And, of course, this is talking about Tyler taking the pictures of her right. and everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, we really didn't get into the picture, that, the, the big picture that he took of her and uh, that other the female student kissing. Mm -hmm. um, but but when he said when she says that nowhere was safe, you took that all away. It goes back to what we were talking mm -hmm. about a few minutes ago, or at the beginning, right. with bullying. This, right. That's the issue with bullying today. Mm -hmm. When we were in school, bullying happened at school. Right. We prayed for three o'clock so that we could leave mm -hmm. and get home as fast as we could because we were safe there. That's right. That is not the case anymore. You're not safe anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it is because of social media. And this is 24 hours a day. Something might come in at two o'clock in the morning. Right. I mean, kids are communicating 24 hours a day. Absolutely. And so you never know when um, disaster is going to strike. Right. It, it could be any hour of the day or night. Um, and you're not safe anywhere because the world exists, as we've been saying all night. Um, the world exists on these devices. And right. so um, it's the device that's driving this whole thing. And devices are on 24 hours a day. Right. And and you're right. When we only had to make it until three o'clock, and if we needed a mental health day, we stayed home for a day. Right. Pulled ourselves together, and then revived and refreshed and reinvigorated, we were able to go back to school and face it. There is no getting away from it. Right. Right. It, because of the digital world that we're in. Right. It, it just it doesn't you dissipate. You can't get away. And, and if anything, it gets worse because people are much braver on an explicit when it's anonymous when it's anonymous when it's that's distant right. and when it's on social media that's right you don't see the other person it's right. easier yeah mm -hmm. so you can be as mean as you could imagine being mm -hmm. and uh, it's okay because right. you don't see the re the the immediate reaction to it it reminds me of world war ii soldiers when they were trained um as riflemen they shot at paper targets with bullseyes mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. And when they went into battle, they couldn't shoot other people. Many of them couldn't bring themselves to shoot people. They, they, that was an experience yeah. they had never had. So after World War II, when we learned that, we started using human-like uh, targets right. uh, during target That's practice. So the soldiers went to Vietnam. They were already used to shooting right. at people, and they right. were better able to do it. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. that's and that's what social media does. Is you're not seeing the people. Thank you, Noreen. I saw the slide up. Um, right, so keeping you on track. Thank you, Noreen. I love you. <laughs> I just love you. And and so social media gives you that distance right. that the World War II soldier. That, right. that I don't see you, so it's okay. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah absolutely. So, um, any other anything else for this? No. I have one more thing that I was going to throw at it about the program in general. I've been thinking a lot about. The program since we did since we started preparing for our initial right. introduction and I, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this do you have a minute I do You're not going anywhere all right so a lot of people talk about this program in general as um, that one of the risks is that it sort of glorifies or it sort of right. Hollywood sort of makes up um, 
uh, uh, suicide and that, you know, hey, if, if these people are picking on you, you can. Um, this is a can, reasonable solution. Right. This is a way that you can get back at them because right. they'll then suffer and everything. What do you, and maybe just think about this and we, we can dig into it a little bit more next week. But um, to me, as I've been thinking about it more, this program really seems to be a, a, a depiction. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily metaphorical, but it's a, it's a depiction of what would happen if we knew what was going on in somebody's mind. Not that this is something that someone would do, but if you knew that that thing that you did there had that effect on someone, would it change you wouldn't do it. you from doing that? Yeah. And, and if you knew that, you know, if if that happened or if somebody experienced that, that they may feel this way, how would you respond to it? What would you do differently mm -hmm. than what you might otherwise do? And I think that that's that's something that um, that's something that I really, I think I I really just love about this program. Um, that perspective that if you were in someone's mind and, and through the tapes we are sort of inside Hannah's mind if you were in someone's mind and you heard them say when you did that mm -hmm. this is what it did to me right how would that change our behavior mm -hmm. we don't get those opportunities no. unfortunately no we don't tell people that right we're, we're taught to mm -hmm. Yeah. When you do I messages. Right. When I you messages, do right. that, I, you know, feel right. like we don't do that. Right. And, and I think because that, it makes you look weak, vulnerable, makes you look too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know, for me to say, and I've done this and I know you have too. I will say to my daughter, you hurt my feelings. Right. I was years ago. I would have been angry. Right. You know, you little brat, you little smart. Uh -huh. I wasn't angry. I was hurt. Right. But it takes it takes another level of something mm -hmm. to say you hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah. We just don't we're not built that way. Yeah. I, I've been on we've been on our way home from uh, soccer practice and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my my son and I will um you know, because it, it's late in the evening. We're both hungry. Mm -hmm. Um we've been working hard for a couple of hours and you know, we'll be a little irritable and um he'll say something or I'll say something. And, um, and, and of course, from my perspective, he like bounces and I'm like, and, and, I, and I say, dude, I'm just, I'm just right. talking to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we don't have to talk, but I'm just, right. I'm just talking with you. And what that does, of course, is it, it kind of lowers it down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then later on we can actually talk about it. But when we are able to communicate that, mm -hmm. um, I think that thing, things certainly go so much more smooth. Right. Smoothler. Smoothly. 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 Mm -hmm. Smoothly. Smoothly. Oh. Smoothly. Smoothly. Is, is that like Bruce's? Smooth. No. Bruce Lee's? Differently. Oh. Um, but it does, it, it, it goes much more smoothly. Right. That was right. That's right. Um, when we can communicate that because it, it's just, um, because then we know what's going on. Communicate your mind. real feelings. Yeah. You know, no, first of all, identify them. Right. Because the default setting could be anger, or I'm offended, right. I'm insulted, you're being dis disobedient, disrespect. No, 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 no. Right. Identify your real feelings. And right. if your feelings have been hurt, say that to the other person. Right. That's teaching them something useful right. rather than punishing them for being disrespectful. Right. And, 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 you know, of course, we're talking about characters. We're not talking about real right. people. So we can say this. If Hannah had been more open to Clay, mm -hmm. Clay would have behaved differently. He would have behaved differently. And if Clay would have known and then behaved differently, Clay would have been that one person that she needed. She needed, right. Um, but she kept him at a distance. Right. right. Um, and, and she didn't know, perhaps. Right. Um, he didn't know, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But when, when we can share that, I think right. that, um, well, I think that that makes a, a tremendous difference. Right. And, I, and I think that that's maybe a way to frame as we go through the rest of these episodes, right. um, look at this as a, a a a creative way to build insight into how someone else feels from about our right. actions. Right. Um, but you have to tell them. They have to know. Right. Yeah. We have to be able to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. That, that that was just something I, I was thinking about that a lot today as I was 
um, well, you were driving east to west. Yeah. I was driving south to north because I had That's to go all right. the way down to, to uh, but down there. No, it is an important message, and it's one that we want to talk to our children about because very often people will say, oh, don't be a baby, or you're being weak, or you're being, no, you're not. You're not being any of those things. Right. You're, you're being honest. You've identified an emotion accurately, and you have, um, you have communicated that um, honestly to right. another person. And now you are le now you're saying to them, this is how it makes me feel. Right. And then it's their decision as to what they're going to do about it. Right, right, right. right. But, so, they, but they know. Right. You, they can't say they didn't, well, oh, I wish you would have said something. Because that's what everybody said. I wish you would have said something. Right, right. You know, let her. Yeah. Let other people tell you how you feel. And don't criticize and ridicule them when they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, slide up now is the preview for next week. Next week. Next week will be tape three. So that's going to be episodes, mm -hmm. uh, what, four and five? Four and five. Uh, that's no, right. no. Five, five and six. six. Right. Uh, whew. It's tough to keep up with sometimes. But that's going to be episodes five and six. Two more wonderful yeah. episodes. That um, that live broadcast is going to be next Thursday night, May 18th, at uh, 6.30 p.m. Right. Next Thursday night. Next Thursday. A week from tonight. Um, I think I can do that. <laughs> but I can't do the next week because it's my daughter's graduation. Well, that's because we're going to do it on Wednesday right. next week. Right. So we you'll be here. You'll be able to do it the Wednesday. Here. Yeah. Yes. I don't have to go to rehearsal. See, folks, that's why we had to switch up the days a little bit. It's right. not because I'm going to go see Wonder Woman on Thursday night while you're at graduation. Are you? It's not. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. We'll have to talk about that. I was thinking about that today as I was driving to Lake <laughs> Wales. Why are you? We'll talk about that. We can talk about it. So, um, all right. So, let's see. Are there, is there anything else that... Oh, Noreen says she loves you, too. She, Noreen, thanks, Noreen. <laughs> I will look forward to next Thursday. And, and Noreen, she, she says that she hasn't watched the last episode because she's a little bit anxious about the, the uh, that final that scene. scene. Um, it, don't it, watch it. It, it, it is... Um, I mean, you know what? Noreen, don't watch. I mean, you I, know what, what I happens. watched. I watched through... Um, Fingers. You know, through my through the fingers. Did you? Yeah, because it was. Yeah, it's pretty raw. Yeah, and yeah. and you may want to skip that that one. Yeah, um, because we all know what happens. Right. So there's no need to. Yeah. And really, there's no need to watch. What it. what 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 I think is powerful with that scene, um, and we'll talk more about it in a couple of episodes of of this uh, our broadcast. But uh, what what is really powerful in it is um, the mother mm -hmm. when she comes in. So, mm -hmm. um, and and you really get a basis for. Um, what, how, why she has behaved, how she has throughout the right. the preceding episode. So, um, so yeah. So, all right. Okay. Hey, thank you all so much thank you for tuning in. for tuning in and listening and being part of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we would love it if you would share uh, with your your friends and neighbors and family mm -hmm. and um, enemies. You you don't have to like them mm -hmm. to share with them uh, about this show. That's okay. Uh, but but. You know, encourage others to listen. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to, we're going to keep digging into these different episodes and hopefully find the little nuggets that are going to be helpful for you as you're, mm -hmm. you're managing your kids. Um, but but get, your, get other people to listen so that we have more people talking about it, more people engaged in the conversation, because I think that as more people get engaged, the more we will be... Um, we'll be good to go. Be so, more effective. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll we'll be able to manage our... Our, our families and our kids and everything better. So, um, all right. And um, so, anything else? That's it from us. So, yeah, it's 90 minutes. Yes. Long time. Thanks again. So, uh, until next time. Next week. Stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. <laughs>